Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Come on in the room. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. Good morning. Come on in the room. Good morning. It is time for our morning devotion. It is time for us to give God what he deserves, what he is looking for. And that's just some time with the people of God, some time to fellowship with him, some time to worship him, and some time to give him glory. Good morning, Sister Sherilyn, you made it up. Good morning, Sister Nicole. Good morning to all of you. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer really quickly. Good morning, Sister Dorothy. And uh, we are going to get right into this meditation. Good morning, Paris. Good morning to you. Father God, we just bless your name, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord, because you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. You are the great I am, Lord God. You are the healer. You are the ruler of all, Lord God. And we thank you for that this morning. Lord, we thank you for these brand new mercies that you've given us today, oh God. And Lord, even though it is cold outside, Lord, you have warmed our hearts because of who you are, Lord God, because of how you've blessed us, Lord God, already, Lord, for the word that shall go forth, God. It is a word that has been designed just for the people of God, that they might, God, be raised up in the things of God, that they may, God, walk in the way that you would have for them to walk, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for healing us, Lord God, for delivering us, O oh Lord God. Thank you for keeping the hand of the enemy away from us, Lord, that we may walk in the plan, the prosperity that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Good morning to all of you. Bishop Holiday, good morning. Sister Phyllis, good morning. Stephanie, good morning to you. Mosetta, good morning. Good morning, Sister Sequisha, good morning. Listen, I would love for all of you to just share this um, word because there's somebody that needs this word. This morning we're talking about you better think. You better think. I um, closed our, our session, our, our series that we had on deliverance. I pray that that series was beneficial to you, beneficial to your families, to those that you shared that with. I pray that that was beneficial. So later on, we're going to, we are going to do a, a series on spiritual warfare. Again, I talked about that yesterday, that there's a difference between warfare and deliverance. And so we're going to do that series here coming up really shortly. Uh, good morning, Sister Rochelle. But today we're talking about You Better Think. Um, Aretha Franklin, um, she wrote a song in 1968 and it was called Think. And then this song, if you look at the lyrics of the song and this song, you know, Aretha had her roots in, uh, in church. She had her roots in Christianity. But in this song, it was talking about freedom. It was talking about forgiveness, but it was talking about thinking. It was talking about thinking and being careful of what it is that you were doing. You better think is what it was saying. And and I, we don't, don't really know who she was singing about, although many speculate that she was singing about her husband who she divorced later on after that. But what she was saying was, you better think. And we take that even from the word of God in Proverbs chapter 4, verse number four, uh, 26, where it says, ponder the path of thy feet and let thy ways be established. Let all of thy ways be established. And what the word is simply saying is that you better think. You got to ponder the path of your feet. Let every way be established. And so as children of God, we don't let things simply just happen to us. We have to make sure that we are careful in thought, that we are thinking things through, that we're thinking them through sober-mindedly, that we're planning, that we're managing um, our lives based on what it is that God has put before us. Good morning, Rachel. So good to see you this morning. And there are goals, there are dreams, there are things that we want to achieve in life. And as we progress through them, the word is saying that we need to think. We need to think. My, uh, my, my, my children get so angry they, when uh, my husband says, you know, they do something and they make a mistake. And then my husband says, think, think. He says, think, use your brain. Think, think. Because the Lord has given us mental um, capacity to think, to expand our, our, our thinking capacity to think. Good morning, Bishop Jones. Thank you so much for the word that you share at, at 6 a.m. every morning. I was thinking about that, Bishop Jones, and that the Lord has given something to all of us that we are able to sacrifice, listen to really to prepare a word that the people of God will be blessed and healed. So I thank you and I appreciate you for that. But going from, rather than bouncing from one thing to another thing, the Lord is saying to us that we've got to be prudent and we've got to fix our eyes on certain things, fix our eyes on our lives, the things that we are walking out. We've got to 
a plan a steady course for ourselves. There's got to be a steady course. There's got to be some discipline in our lives where we are walking this walk out. We're not going from one thing to the next thing, but we are saying, this is the course that I'm going to take. This is the course, listen, the godly course that I'm going to take. Good morning, Sister Mary Deacon Ron. So where are you going? Where are you going? The word of the Lord is saying, ponder the path of your feet. Where are you going? Are we just in this life just to go through life without having any real direction? Is life happening to you rather than you deciding on the direction or just rather you directing the things that are going on in your life? Um, Are you just walking every day by day and then you wake up in the morning and say, okay, it's another day and then the day goes over, is done and then you wake up and it's another day. Are you thinking about what is happening as your days go on? The Bible says we have to examine ourselves Examine ourselves whether we are in the faith. We've got to prove ourselves and know ourselves. We've got to know that Christ is in us. The word of God says that in 2 Corinthians chapter um, 13, verse number 5. It says that we've got to consider our ways. And so oftentimes we don't think about things. We just allow things to happen. But this morning I'm saying you got to think. you got to think. What does it mean to ponder? What does it mean to ponder? It means to weigh something heavily, weigh a matter heavily. It means to consider it. It means to carefully think about it. It means to meditate on it. It means, you know, to really uh, just think about that thing. And many of us are too busy. Many of us are too busy to really think about what it is that we're, that's going on in our lives. We're too busy to ponder a thing. We're too busy to think about what is happening in our lives. Some of us are too busy with whatever else we have going on that we can't really think about what God has put in our place or in our stead, <clears throat> excuse me, that we think about. We've got to stop being so busy, people of God, that we can't look at what God wants us to look at. Some of us are too busy watching television. We're too busy on our phones or our mobile devices. Listen, we're too busy, and we've got to stop being so busy with entertainment, with movies, with TV, with electronics, with the Internet, with Facebook. We've got to stop being so busy. Instead, we've got to have some quiet time to reflect, to think, to ponder, about what God wants to do in our lives. Psalms 10, 4, it says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all of his thoughts. But we are not like the wicked ones. This is the wicked ones, they don't know where they're going. You know, why are they going in a certain direction? They don't know. They don't know the consequences of it. And they are victims of their circumstances rather than, listen, being managers of them. Rather than managing their circumstances, the wicked, the word of the Lord is saying they are victims of their circumstances. They are foolish is what the word, is, what the word of God is saying. And there will be consequences for their foolishness. But God has given us all direction. And it's up to us to follow our direction. I mean, it's like our GPS. And I mean, I'm guilty of this all the time. We we put an address in the GPS. That means we are asking for direction. We ask God for direction. We put our address in the GPS and then we choose to go a different direction. You know, I, I did that the other day. I put the address in. I chose to go a different direction because I saw a street that I knew. I went down the street and it, and it was a dead end. I thought, you know, why did I do that? And, you know, and I, and I would imagine if the if the GPS could talk, she would say, listen, I'm just going to let you go wherever you want to go. Stop asking me for direction if you're not going to follow the direction. And sometimes I believe that's what the Lord is saying to us. Stop asking for direction if you're not going to follow the instructions that I give you. But the word in Job is saying that God knows the way. He knows the way that we should take. The Lord knows the way. And then the word also goes on to say that when he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. So what are we saying? We're saying that when you follow the direction that the Lord has given to you, he says, when you've been tried, when you, when you go through some obstacles, when you go through some situations, when you go through some temptations, when you go through some struggles, the Lord says, then you shall come out as gold. That as gold. was found in Job. We know he went through many different things. And we know in the end that Job received a double. We have to follow, yes, the instructions that the Lord has given to us. And we as children of God, we had to walk our lives out being thoughtful. 
thinking about it, pondering the path of our steps. We understand the Lord says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But we gotta we gotta ponder our steps. What should we do? What should we say? What should we get involved in? We gotta think about those things. Because the word also says that, that the man plans his way, but it is God that orders his steps. So I can plan a way to go and then God can order my steps. But what what are the plans that I should have? What should I get involved in? 1 Corinthians 10, 23, it says, All things are lawful for me, but they are all things are not expedient for me. That's what Paul was saying. He says, All things are lawful for me, but I shouldn't get involved with everything. Oh, I can do it if I want to, but should I get involved in it? Is that something that I need to get involved in? Also, scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 12, it says, All things same are lawful for me, but all things, listen, do not edify me. All things are lawful, but everything don't doesn't edify me. Everything doesn't bring me glory. Everything doesn't bring power to me. So I can do a thing. Sure, I can do it. Why? Because I'm grown, right? That's what we say. We grown and you can do it. But the word of the Lord is saying is think about what it is that you're doing. Think about what you're getting involved in. Is what you're doing, is it edifying you? Is it bringing glory to God? Is it edifying the body of Christ? Is it, yes, it's lawful. It's not going to send you to jail. But is it going to ruin your reputation? Is it going to gain you respect among men and women in this in the city, in the region, in the country? Is it going to do that? Think about what it is that you get yourself involved in. I would say that it was it was someone who would be foolish, not wise, who lives their life without thinking, who walks without meditating, who chooses a path without pondering. And as children of God, as Christians, the Bible says we are to walk circumspectly. We are to examine our path from every angle, from every angle. You, you, you hear me say it often. I believe that everything that happens is spiritual because I believe that the enemy wants to have us. The enemy always wants to have us. And so therefore the enemy is always on, on his square trying to do whatever he can to steal, kill, and to destroy. And he will use whatever tactic he can use. And so anytime there is something that I believe that comes up that is not uh, uh, in, the, in line with the word of God and the will of God for my life, I believe that it's spiritual. So that means I need to start thinking, what, what meaneth these things? Why is that happening? Why is that occurring? Why is that occurring? And as the word of God says in Ephesians 5, we have to see then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It is your responsibility, Hebrews says, your duty to make straight the paths for your feet. It's your responsibility to make the path straight for your feet. Because you have to understand, listen, as you think things out, what is the will of God for your life? Yes, you can do it. But is that the will of God for your life? And that's another thing. That brings us to what it is that keeps us from pondering the path of our feet for our lives. Is pondering about somebody else's life. That keeps us from pondering the path of our feet. Because we're looking at someone else. We're looking at the path that someone else is taking. And we're wondering if they can do that. Then certainly I can. And although we recognize that the Lord is no respecter of persons and what he'll do for one, he'll do for others, but it doesn't mean that he's going to do it the same way for you, that he does it for somebody else. And so we have to be mighty careful of looking at someone else, pondering the path of somebody else as, and comparing that to the way that we should go. We've got to be mighty careful about that. Luke 18, 19, it says, it is the wicked, self-righteous hypocrite that ponders the lives of others instead of his own. He comforts himself in his sins by trying to identify as many as possible in others. And in that passage of scriptures, we know the word of the Lord is saying that there was, the Lord was speaking a parable um, in which he trusted People trusted in themselves that they were righteous and they despised others. And two men went to the temple to pray. You all may know this parable. And one of them was a Pharisee and one was a publican. And the Pharisee prayed and he stood 
and he prayed and he said, I thank God that I'm not as other men. I'm not as other men, as extortioners. I'm not unjust. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not even as this publican. He's talking, he's praying. He's telling the Lord who he's not. He's comparing himself to other people, trying to, listen, sometimes we do that. Sometimes we put other people down to make ourselves look better. And the word is saying, don't do that. He's in this public, this Pharisee is saying, I fast twice a week. He's, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, he didn't even look up at him, is what the word of the Lord is saying. And the publican just smote up on his breast and he said, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And then the word is saying, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the others. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So Jesus is not concerned about you being comparing yourself to other people. It proves you to be a fool is what the word is saying. So what should you ponder? What should you be thinking about? You should be pondering, listen, the path that you taking. You should be walking and growing in the grace that God has given to you. Growing in the grace and the knowledge of Christ that the Lord has given to you. You should be worried about. Listen, these are the things that you should be concerned about. Are you bearing good fruit? Are you an example to others who are looking on to you where you may not think anybody is paying attention? Are you that example of the Christian, the follower of Jesus Christ that you need to be so that others may be drawn to the Lord? The Bible says if we lift Jesus, if we will lift him, if we will exalt him, if we will exalt his name, if we will do that, if we will show others through our testimony, through our life, through our example that Jesus is Lord of Lord, he is King of Kings and our faith is in him and that we believe that he can do anything but fail, listen, then, then he then will draw others to himself. But people have got to see that. Are you pondering that? That's what you should ponder. Are you forgiving? That's the walk you should walk. Are you forgiving others? We just went through a whole series. Listen, on deliverance, are you forgiving others? Are you loving others? Are you serving in the way that God would have for you to serve? Are you doing that? Is is your marriage the way that it should be? Is your marriage an example to couples, to young couples, to those who are contemplating marriage? We know that marriage is, is an institution that is ordained by God. We know that when we are together, when we are together, we can put 10,000 to flight. Is your marriage one that people can look at you, listen, not only on the outside, because sometimes we, we, uh, we, 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 we fake a good game on the outside, but I mean on the inside, is your marriage such that people can look at you and say that's an example of what I would like to follow, how I'd like to pattern myself after, not because of them, but because of the God that's in them, because of the godly example. What about the activities of your life? They're talking about pondering, pondering the path of your life. What about the activities of your life? I just said it. You know, there are things that you, there are, they're lawful for you to do, but do they edify you? Do they build you up? Do they build? Do they lift you up? Yeah, I can go to the club all day. I can dance. I can do all that. But does that lift you up? Does that edify you? Are the activities in your life that you are participating in, does that create temptation for you? Does that invite those spirits back in that we were just delivered from? Do those activities lead you back into sin? We got to ponder. We got to think about that. Are the things that I'm participating in, you know, in the night watches, do those you know, lead to temptation in my life? Are we, listen, thinking about the things of the kingdom? Are we being kingdom minded? Kingdom minded, what is that? Are we thinking about winning souls for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we thinking about that? Are we pondering that? Are we pondering the path that when we leave this earth, listen, that we are preparing ourselves for our heavenly home? Do we have a kingdom view from that standpoint? Are we preparing ourselves to be with the Lord one day? Or are we just living it up, doing all that we can right now, and then just hoping and praying 
that before we leave, that we will have an opportunity on our deathbed to ask the Lord to forgive us and receive us into his kingdom. Think about it. Think about it. Because the word is, and I haven't heard it, I haven't heard it much um, lately, but the word is if you were to die today, would Jesus Christ say to you, servant, well done? Would he find you the righteous one? Would he find you as the church without the spot or the wrinkle? Would he find you without the blemish? No, nope, nobody's perfect. But Jesus died that we would be forgiven of every sin that we have. Is your life pleasing to the Lord? Is it pleasing to him? Listen, when you go to church on Sundays, is it that you're being relational with your brother and sister or are you just coming to soak in everything that the Lord has for you? Are you being faithful? Are you being consistent in the things of God? Are you being consistent in your walk with the Lord? That's what you should be pondering. We should be thinking about those things. Do you read? Do you meditate day and night on the word of God? That's what you should be pondering. That's what we're talking about. Ponder the path of your feet. That's what I should be worried about. Am I, or am I worried about houses and cars and lands and money? Matthew 6 and 33, it says, well, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. A kingdom view, that's right, Bishop. Looking past our right now. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Lord says, all that stuff you're talking about, all that stuff we've been thinking about, all that stuff that we've been running over people about, all that things we've been stepping over people for, the Lord says, that's nothing. That's nothing to me. Oh, you can, you can have that. You, that's right. You can't wait till the last minute. He says, you can have all of that. You seek me first. Seek my kingdom first. Be kingdom minded. Ponder the path of your feet. I want to ask husbands, men, have you been pondering the path of your wife, your children? Have you been, con have you considered where they're going? The path that they're going? Have you considered, now, now that's your family. That's your family. Psalm 34 says it's your responsibility to lead them, to guide them, to correct them in the fear of the Lord, in the admonition of the Lord. That's, that's love. It's your, it's your responsibility to, to prepare them for the things of God. Men, heads of households, are you doing that? Are you pondering the path of your family's feet? This is where the Lord says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Are you pondering the path of your family's feet? What is keeping us? What is keeping us from thinking about the things that we should be thinking about, that we should be pondering? What is, what is keeping us? Whatever it is, it's not worth it. Whatever it is, is not worth us wandering away from the presence of God. Whatever it is, is not worth us wandering away from the presence of God's people. Whatever it is, it's just not worth it. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man. But the end of that way is death. The end of that way is death. That's found in Proverbs 21 and 16. The end of that is death. We've got to ponder the path of our feet. Proverbs 5 and 21, it says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. So we cannot forget the duty to ponder where we're walking. We cannot to forget the duty to think. As my husband says to the kids, think, think, use your brain. We have to answer the call to ponder the path of our feet. So that we will be visible teachers in the presence of God, in the presence of God's people. For those who do not know, listen, for those who do not know the Lord and the pardon of their own sin, how will they be brought to Christ? Unless they see you, some of you are, some of us are the only Bible that people will read. How will they be brought to Christ unless we are the ones that help to show them the way? We have to show them the way. The Psalm says in 119.59 says, I thought on my ways and then turned my feet unto my testimonies. We have to think on our ways 
And then look, think about the things that the Lord has done for us. Think about what God has done for you. So as even as you're thinking about the things that God would have for you to do, think about what God has already done for you. The things that he's done, the things that he's brought you out of. The things over these past week or week and a half that he's brought you out of. You've got to consider carefully the snares, the traps, the tricks that, the in, that God has brought you out of that the enemy tried to put you in. And then there's a testimony that you have about those. As you ponder the path of your feet. As a true child of God, listen, you got to continue in the word of God. That's how we ponder. Continue in the word of God. Believe on the word of God. The Bible says you shall be healed. Believe on the word of God. Hold fast in the confidence and knowing that the Lord is your hope. He is your strength. Listen, and you can rejoice in him to the end of time. We've got to think, people of God. Not going willy-nilly in this earth, in the earth realm, in the world. But you've got to think. Ponder the path of your feet. And as you are thinking, we've got to be kingdom-minded. All the other junk and mess we're thinking about. Listen, you can let that stuff go. But let's now start being kingdom-minded. I am of a mind now where the people of God has got to, first of all, they got to be blessed. People of God have got to be healed. But the people of God have got to start making an impact in the earth realm, in your communities, in your neighborhoods, but especially in the earth realm. We have got to start making an impact, people of God. And we have got to know that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's all powerful. And no matter what the government might do, no matter what anybody else might do, God's kingdom is more powerful than any of that. And God's kingdom shatters the kingdom of the enemy in two. It breaks it into pieces. And until we as a people of God begin to walk in that kingdom mindset, until we can begin to understand that we have all power, until we begin to understand that the Lord, listen, as we walk, the Lord walks with us. Until we begin to understand that we will all be powerless. But listen, we are not powerless. We are powerful. Because we are powerful, we have the victory in all things. Father God, we just bless your name, Lord God, for victory, Lord God. And as we think, Lord God, as we ponder the path of our ways, Lord God, as we ponder the path of our steps, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are with us. Lord, help us, God. Help us, God, to be healed in our mind, God, in our spirit, oh Lord God. Help us to understand that, God, the sure rock is Jesus Christ. And we, when, when we lean, like, we can fall on the rock, we can lean on the rock, we can wrap ourselves around the rock. But when we do that, Lord God, we will be established, God, in the truth of God, recognizing, Lord God, that you can do anything but fail. We thank you, Lord God, that as God, you give us a mind, God, open our minds and our hearts and our spirit, Lord God, to think on those things that are you, God, like you, about you, Lord God. God, help us, Lord God, to ponder the ways of our path. Lord, let every way be established in you, Lord God. The things, God, that we've been doing, that we've been participating in, Lord God, that have not been you like you, God, not been bringing you glory. Lord God, I ask you allow us, God, to remove, be removed far from those things. Lord, we repent, Lord, as a matter of fact, of those things that we've done, Lord, that have not brought you glory. We repent, God, of those things that we have done, Lord God, that have not only have not brought you glory, God, that God has been damaging to us, God, damaging, God, to our reputation. Oh God, damaging God to our relationships, God, with one another, God, and our relationships with you. Lord God, I just ask that you to continue, God, to heal, God, to move, God, in a mighty way, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to deliver and set free. Freedom, oh Lord God, is what we need as we walk this life out, Lord God. Help us, God, to be kingdom minded, Lord. Now, right now, God, I pray, God, for those that have asked for prayer, God, for those that are sick among us, God, for the bereaved family all over, God, this region, oh Lord God. Pray you will comfort them, oh Lord God. Lift them up from their beds of affliction. Lord God. Continue, God, to heal because we know, Lord God, the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So we decree and we declare healing, God, over their bodies right now in the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, that you will bring, God, everything that is out of order, out of kilter, back into divine order according to your word, Lord God. And when they are healed, God, they shall know, God, that you, God, the miracle worker, God, the doctor, Lord God, you, God, have been the one that has healed them, Lord God. Not, God, the physicians, God, but you, Lord God, by your power and your 
your, your might, Lord God, have healed them. So, Lord God, we just thank you God, for this word. I pray this word will be engrafted to the hearts of the people and the minds of the people, oh Lord God, that we might be changed. Changed, Lord God, into the image of you. Changed, oh Lord God, that we may look like you, that we may walk like you, that we, God, may talk like you. And, Lord God, not having a form of godliness, but, Lord God, having the power of God. Thank you, God, that we may be able to step on, tread over, trample the enemy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, I love you all with the love of Jesus. It is cold outside today. You stay warm. And as I said on yesterday, if you have any loved ones that are elderly, please check on them to make sure that they are getting the warmth, um, the comfort that they need in this frigidness here in the Midwest. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You all go in peace.